There came a point in my life when I knew I had to change it. So I took a chance and sold and gave away everything that I owned. To experience a new life living out on the canals and rivers of the UK. So I'd like you to come along and experience it with me every step of the way. Morning YouTubers. I'm at the end of the Ashby Canal coming up to the Winding Hole and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn H and try and reverse up onto the facilities point. I'll show you this manoeuvre in real time. That means no cutting and editing. In this episode we're going to be going back to Market Bosworth and we'll be stopping three times on the way and I'll explain that as we go along. It's a bit of a windy day today and there's a lot of side winds and it could help wind in the boat or it could hinder it. We'll see. As I've said loads of times before on these videos, H has got no steering in reverse, and I think that's the same on most narrowboats. So every now and again you have to pop it into forward gear and try and point it where you want to go. So if you listen as I'm doing it, you'll hear me going backwards and forwards into reverse and in forward gear. look at the ripples on the left in the water that's a clue that I've got it in reverse just pushing the water that way and now I'm in forward gear just nudging the bow round so that I'll be pointing in the right direction. As soon as I'm close enough to the bank, I'll be jumping off and pulling H back with the centre line. We're nearly there now, and when I get in the right position, I'll temporarily tie H up with the centre line onto one of the mooring bollards. Then I'll do the usual stuff like empty the toilet cassettes, fill up with water and dump any rubbish that I've got.
that wasn't a perfect manoeuvre but then again when you're out here I don't think I've ever done anything perfect but I suppose I'll give myself about a 6 out of 10 for that This is a nice compact little facilities point. There's a little bit of canal up there, still left, and there's a small winding hole at the end that I didn't bother going down. I mean, you've got like the charity shop there, with all the bric a brac and stuff. And I actually saw someone walking around, so I managed to buy a bag of coal as well. £18 a bag, which is terrible. This time last year I was getting coal for £10 a bag. little jobs done. Now we're on our way to Snarestone to pick up a new crew member. And even the sun's come out and made an appearance. But I don't think it'll last long in this wind when them clouds are moving. It makes it very awkward to keep the boat straight in these side winds. If you're not careful you'll be pinned to the bank. So you have to go a little bit faster than usual. Still keeping it under four miles an hour of course. just coming out of Snarston Tunnel and I'm going to moor up at the first opportunity I get. If you look to the immediate left you'll see some mooring bollards. They're for people waiting to go in the tunnel if someone's already in there. But hopefully just past them there's some CRT moorings. And that'll be perfect for me. Didn't go too far today, but you'll see why very soon. Not a bad little mooring, just past the tunnel. And if you look up that ramp, there's the car park to the Globe pub. Watch out, there comes the heavy mob. <laughs> Alright, how's you been? Alright? He slept the whole way, so calm. Good, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> he likes a cuddle apparently. Go and let him, he only lick it. Ow! Claws will let me. He's had a pretty stressful day leaving everything that he knows and now he's exhausted. You're going to go in your crate while we go on your first journey? Yeah, it's boring, isn't it? Well, that's where he's going to go. He doesn't seem too enthusiastic about it. The next stop 
is the village of Shekistan. As if you remember from the last episode, if you watched it, I missed out on the moorings and promised you that I'd stop there on the way back. So have a little look around. We've had some really windy weather of late. Not so bad when uh, you're in like the sheltered areas, but when there's an open field coming up, it catches you out sometimes. This GRP cruiser on the left ended up following me along. He had some terrible problems in the wind. Where is so lightweight? hear how windy it is now and I've turned the volume down or she wouldn't hear me speak such a pretty place here You're probably thinking what I've named a little Jack Russell puppy. And I've named him Ashby. Which is a good job that I wasn't going down the Langochlan when I got him. But yeah, Ashby is his name. Speaking of Ashby, I'm going to pull over here go and get him out of his little crate and bring him on the back with me. I've got a little lead that I can tie him to the door handle and it's short enough that he won't get near the water. So we'll see how he goes with that. worried that he would be scared of the engine running but so far I've had no problems with that just seems to take it all in his stride Market Bosworth so that Ashby can get his jabs and that's tomorrow afternoon. So I can't hang about at Shackerstone. I'll be leaving the uh, very next morning quite early to make sure I can get to the vets on time. watching that GRP cruiser that I mentioned earlier as he's following me along and he's had some terrible times I've seen him pinned up against the bank at least once I've started to see some boats moored up so I think we're not too far now from Shackerstone See how windy it is with that Union Jack going right across. A quick report on Ashby the pup. Seems to be enjoying himself. He's having a look around and he's not nervous, which is fantastic.
think I've just seen the space to moor up. See that boat on the left? Just past that will do. And I'm having to go into the mooring a bit faster than I usually would because the wind is blowing me onto that moored boat. If I was going any slower, I would hit it. old spot but I'm only going to be there for a night so that ain't going to bother me you good boy is that your first trip good boy I'll come and get you in now Well, here's where we ended up, and I'm heading for that bridge there, and to the left of the bridge is the battlefield line, which runs steam trains, and that's where we're going to go first, and it looks like it's down that little track. A weekday so I don't think we're going to be lucky enough to see any steam trains but we can have a look around the station do you remember in the last episode when we went over an aqueduct and we could hardly see the river we get a better view of it from down here it's the river sense a small river but it's running quite fast and up there is Shackerstone station it's called the battlefield line and they run steam trains backwards and forwards along three stops and it's all run and maintained by volunteers and there's tea rooms in here which I think I will sample. Looks like they're working on the old carriages at the moment. I think I've made it up here just in time for the volunteers tea break. I think this must have been one of the waiting rooms. They've changed it into like a little tea room. It's lovely in here. Have you ever seen that film, The Railway Children? Well, it looks just like that. And I'm expecting to see Perks running out, blowing his whistle. Lovely. We're back on the bridge now, over the canal. And while we're here, we might as well go down the other side and look at the rest of the village and see what it's got to offer. The name Shackerston derives from the old English name Sacriston which means believe it or not robbers farmstead this looks a lovely pub that you can eat outside in a lovely area I couldn't find out the age of it but it looks kind of Tudor to me I'm really glad I walked up to the village and had a look it's beautiful around here. 
one of the best little villages that I've seen. Lovely little atmosphere. And there's a path here that runs adjacent to the church. And it's got some beautiful houses and cottages along there. It's idyllic. So if you're coming along this way in the summer and you like a pint and something to eat outside a beautiful little pub, stop at this place and I don't think you'll be disappointed. There's been a church here since Saxon times, which is before the year 1066. It's obviously not this church, what you see now due to all the add-ons and alterations that must have happened over the years. As I was sitting in the churchyard, taking in all the atmosphere like I do, I noticed these three gravestones. It's John Underwood is buried next to his two wives. The first one died in her early 20s the second one in her 60s so he outlived the pair of them I can't quite read their names though this is my second effort at trying to cast off the mooring and I keep getting blown back Trying to get a move on before I end up back on the bank again. Let's see how we do this time. It's going to work again, and I better hurry up and get it in reverse, or so I'm going to bash into that moored boat. If it carries on like this, so I'm going to miss my appointment at the vets. try and shove H out more from the middle of the boat this time and see how we get on. Give it the best shove that I can without falling in. Like we've got it this time. Yeah, I've got a bit of propulsion going now, so free. Ordinarily, I wouldn't come out in wind like this, but I've got three miles that I've got to do to Market Bosworth so that the poor little dog can get his jabs and then we can go out for some walks. That's the bridge we was on earlier, doing our little walk around. And 
with Ashby, looks like he likes that camera a bit too much. I think he's going to be one of them trying to grab all the limelight. I'm not sure if I like all that. But I must admit, he is a handsome little chap. remember when we walked up to the old station and I showed you the river well that's right beneath us now I'm almost going along sideways in these unsheltered areas like we could be in for a bit of a problem here. There's a moored boat on the right and another boat coming towards me and I'm going to have to slow down as I hit that moored boat. But when I slow down I'm liable for the wind to pin me to the bank. I know you should only go tick over past moored boats but I could do with this other boat opening up a little bit and going a bit faster. Over. Looks like we've got through that one unscathed. past the village of Congerstone now so I haven't got to put up with this wind for too much longer before I get to Market Bosworth when I get to Market Bosworth I'm going to have to carry Ashby to the vets because I haven't got any of them little carriage boxes what pets have can't walk because he might pick up some sort of disease so yeah probably about three quarters of a mile's walk and then the same back but it's all good exercise I suppose I don't mind a bit of that now my knee's feeling a bit better This higher boat coming up towards me has picked the wrong week with all this wind. It's a bit of a shame really, but I hope they're still enjoying it. I can see the buildings of Market Bosworth coming up in the distance. So we're nearly there, thank God. And I'm going to moor up just past this blue boat. And I should have enough time for something to eat 
and a cup of tea before I set off again. This time on foot though. That towpath looks like a bit of a muddy mess. But if that's all I've got to moan about, things aren't too bad, are they? Can you remember when I was here before, for those of you that watch the channel? Stuck in about three inches of ice. So we don't get any more weeks like that one for at least a year anyway. Look at him in his little coat. We had no fuss up there at all. I don't think he even felt the needle. Oh, he's seen the camera. He's posing again. I think he knows he's a handsome little chap. So while Ashby's sleeping, it gives me time to thank some lovely, generous and kind people. I'd also like to thank my members on the Buy Me A Coffee app and for the price of one coffee a month get two extra videos a month behind the scenes. So thank you all very much. And if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up or even subscribe because it all helps the channel and I'll see you next time.